Hi guys, and we're live, and two of us already joined in the chat, which is great. Who have we? Uh, who have we got today? Let me know. Uh, let me know who you are in the comments. Type your name. Remember, just your first name, not your second name. You can put your class after your first name if you want. Five people already. Not bad. Got Karina. Hi, Karina. Good to see you again. Okay, uh, while people are joining the chat, again, feel free to post your name. Let me know who I'm uh, talking to today. But the plan for today, we're going to go through a few different things. <clears throat> we're going to start off with a wee sort of health and well-being thing. We're just going to kind of check in with each other because I understand what it's like over this time. It's nice just to maybe see a familiar face and just chat as if, as if we were in the classroom, albeit you guys are having to manually type your responses, but it's better than nothing. Um... We're going to go over a little bit of the maths from yesterday. Um, most of us did really, really well with that. Uh, but one or two little problems that we might, we will hopefully be able to resolve. We're going to go over a little bit of the writing. Some of you were writing some wonderful uh, creative pieces yesterday. I know I said it was a diary entry. I, I suppose in, in, in more than anything, it was just kind of a piece of creative writing, to be honest. Uh, it can just be a story of, of any sort, uh, as long as it was related to... Uh, the, the zeitgeist of our time, the, the things that are currently going on in the world. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the, the bulk of today uh, should be taken up with a grammar lesson. So I'm going to go over a little bit of grammar. Uh, the, the materials are already posted, and if you had a look at that in advance on Teams, that'd be great. Um, but if not, don't worry about it. I'm going to talk you through it because uh, I, I think I can probably make it a, hopefully a little bit clearer here. Uh, than, than just reading about it on a Word document, okay? So in any case, um, hold on, I've got, my, uh, I've got my script up here. Right, the chat's filling right up. We've got uh, lots of people here. So to start off with, a wee sort of health and well-being check-in just now, um, and this will practice your typing skills a wee bit. Um, what I want you guys to, uh, to talk about in the comments, you can just write a, a, a quick response here, either something that you have found um, a little bit challenging over the last while because I think it's quite good that we all acknowledge that this period is a little bit challenging and we're all faced with different challenges. Um, so you can start typing that just now if there's anything that you find particularly challenging, anything that you find particularly emotional, or better yet, to give us all a bit of a lift, I'd like you to write something that you're perhaps thankful for in some way, uh, something that has given you a bit of a, an emotional lift over the last while. Um, so hopefully you're, you're typing away furiously on your keyboards right now. Uh, and are starting to get a few ideas down for us to share. I'll start off uh, in, in the meantime, while hopefully your comments are coming through. This is the first time I'm trying to be really interactive with you guys, and we'll see, see how well it works. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things that I suppose I've found quite challenging, and I, I think I went into this whole situation uh, maybe, a, maybe a little bit too self-assured in some ways. Uh, I thought that this working from home thing would, would be not too challenging, but actually it turns out it's really quite tricky. Um, there, there have been a lot of issues, and Miss Lindsay and I were talking about it on the phone this morning, and like we were both sort of saying, are you finding this stressful? And yeah, like we, we both are, and it's, it, it, it's amazing how different it is um, trying to trying to do this sort of teaching from home. That, that's something that I, I, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I thought it would be easier. I thought it would be less work, and actually it's, it's not. Uh, we've realized that we're actually working longer hours. Miss Lindsay and I actually worked longer hours over the past few days than we would do normally on a school day. Um, and it's it's because we really want to give you guys a decent educational experience still. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it's, it's not the same as having this one-to-one -one interaction. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I'm thankful for, though, so giving the flip side of that, I'm seeing some of your comments coming up now, and that's good. Um, one of the things that I'm really thankful for at the moment is uh, the fact that I'm still able to do my job and I'm still fortunate enough to, to have a job under these circumstances. And I, I, you know, I, I can imagine, I can only imagine how, how stressful it might be for some other people out there. So I feel really privileged about that. And that's why I really want to do the best that I can do for you guys. Um, I know that Miss Lindsay 
feels the same about that as well. We're, we're both really trying really, really hard to make sure that you're getting a good standard of work, that you're getting the best teaching input that we can manage. You'll see that <clears throat> for all the tasks, we're, we're both posting audio files of it as well. That's that's something that we're doing to just try and make it a little bit more accessible to you guys, a little bit more understandable. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm thankful for that, that we're, we're still able to do uh, what, what we're meant to do. Uh, and, and that's pretty good. Um, so let's have a look at a couple of your comments. Uh, a couple really, really nice comments here. Um, we've got Freddie. Freddie saying that he's thankful that we can continue learning. I'm thankful about that too, pal. I think that's that's really good. Um, we've got Alyssa here just saying thanks for the support. I appreciate that, Alyssa. Um, we've got Lucy saying that she's thankful that she can spend more time with her parents. Uh, and I think that's that's a really great great thing to say, actually, because you know we are going to be spending much more time around our families over the over the next wee while, um, and I, th I think it's good that we can maintain uh, really positive relationships with them. Um, Aisha saying that uh, she's thankful that they can still talk to each other on Teams and YouTube. I think that that's really good as well. Um, and you, you've written a, a very lovely comment as well. You're 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 saying that you're lucky to have a teacher that does YouTube. I, I suppose. You know, I, I appreciate that. You're flattering me. But um, yeah, anyway, um, I'm really thankful that so many of you guys have tuned in. We're up at 35 at the moment. Oh, just down to 34. Someone tuned out. Oh, well, can't win all the time. Anyway, that's our wee health and well-being check-in. Uh, for now, um, we're going to start off talking a little bit about maths from this week. So actually, I've got my, uh, my literacy lesson up here, but I'm going to start off with maths. So I'll see if I can... I know this is just out of shot at the moment. I'll try and move it over in a wee bit. Um, incidentally, can you let me know? Because for me on, on the webcam, this is all reversed right now. And there's not much point in me writing up here if it's going to be reversed for you guys. So on, uh, on this here, does it clearly say 40% of 70 to you guys? Or is it back to front? Um, give me a yes. Give me a yes if it is the right way round, please. If, if that is legible, the correct way round to you, because on my webcam, it's not. Um, yes, excellent. We've got a few yeses there coming up. Right, so you can see that the right way round. It's just on my screen that it's reversed, which is a bit distracting, but that's okay. Excellent. Um, so we posted a whole lot of work on Teams yesterday, and um, I, I hope lots of you worked through it. Certainly, I was able to see that a good number of you um, ended up uh, actually posting it to the chat feed, which is what we want you to do. It's our way of of kind of checking in with you guys. So if you post it to the chat feed, then we can uh, have a wee look at your work, see how you're getting on, and then I can give feedback in sessions such as this. So for the most part, everyone seemed to show really great understanding, and that's good. One or two things that, that trip people up, I've, I've written down a couple of examples here just for me to go through for you guys, and feel free to, to join in as well. I hope you can see this on the screen. My internet has been playing up today and I'm hoping I'm not too jumpy. Um, but for this example here, 40% of 70. Um, how do we actually tackle that? Well, we have, we've already talked about the fact that 10% is our gateway percentage. That's the thing that we really want to be working out first. Once you work out 10%, you can work out pretty much anything else, nay bother at all. So the way I would tackle this one, I'd start out, and feel free to do it yourself, follow along if you've got your, your jotter, um, if you've got a piece of paper or a, a whiteboard that you can follow along on, by all means. I would start off here by working out 10% of 70. And how do we work out 10% of a number? Well, it's really easy. We divide by 10. 10% is just dividing by 10. So 10% of 70, well, that's 7. Right. So that's 10%. But we're not being asked 10%. We're being asked 40%. How do you turn 10% into 40%? Well, you multiply it by 4. It's 4 lots of 10%. So 40% of 70 then is going to be four times seven, four times the 10%. So I'm going to take that seven and I'm going to multiply it by four. Am I still on the screen there? Yes, I am. Uh, and so the answer there, four times seven, points for the answer, anyone got it? 28, yes, it's already in the chat. 28, very good. Um, so that's how we would sort that one out there. 
Easy enough. Oh, this is easy. Someone saying in the comments, and that's fine. You know, but it's remember what might be easy for you might not be easy for everyone. And if everyone's not got their teacher right beside them explaining it, then not everyone's going to find it as easy as they could. Um, okay, so let's get this one up. And that one perhaps was a little bit easier because we're just doing uh, we're just doing our ten percent, and then multiplying it by four in this case. But what was one of the other examples that? I saw a couple of people tripped up by. Uh, let's try 45% of 80. Now, if we want to work that out, we've kind of got two parts here. We've got a 40% and we've got a 5%. And we're going to need to work out both those parts independently and then combine them in order to actually find out the 45%. So, like before, our gateway percentage is, say it with me, 10%. Okay. 10% of 80, which we do just by dividing it by 10, the answer to which is 8. Right, well, that gives us 10%. We're not being asked 10%, though. We're being asked 45%. So we're going to chunk that into a 40 and a 5. So to get 40%, 40% of 80, we're going to take that 8, which is 10%, and we're going to times it by, any guesses, 4, hopefully. Uh, the answer to which 8 times 4 is 32. So that is 40%. 40% of 80 is 32. But we also need to work out 5%. And this is where a few people were going a little bit wrong. So some people, we know that to get our 10% into a 5%, we have to half it. The problem I saw some people doing was you were halving this number. And that's not right. If you half this number, you're going to get 20% because you're halving 40% there. Now, what we need to be doing is we need to half the 10%. So if we want 5%, we're going to take the 10%, so 5% of 80. We're going to take the 10% here, which is 8, and we're going to divide it by 2. So 5% of it is 4. Therefore, 45% is going to be 40% plus 5%, so that's 32 plus 4, the answer is 36, okay? Hopefully that's made it clearer for people that are, are finding it a little bit trickier. The key is work out your 10% first. You can then make that bigger to work out larger percentages, such as your 30s and 40s and 70s, uh, and you can then divide it to make it smaller to work out things like 5% or 1%. Um, I'm going to do one more just quickly. I'm, I know I'm laboring the point a bit, but I'm, I saw one person in the comment that someone I really want to get it. Uh, I want one, uh, saw one person saying that they're still not quite understanding it, so I'm going to do just one final example. Now, I would say if, if you're finding this stuff really tricky, this is the spicier hot option. The milder options are working on things like just 30%, 40%, 20%. Maybe that's where you should be aiming if you're finding this stuff tricky and you haven't got a teacher right beside you to help. Um, so think about pitching it at the right level for yourself, guys, okay? There's no shame in saying, right, actually, that's enough for me just now. But let's do one more quickly. So we're going to do 35% of, what one is it, 50. Okay, so we're going to work out 10%. Well, what's 10% of 50? Type it to me in the comments, five. So taking that 10%, we need to multiply it by three to get 30%, because the 35% we're wanting is a 30% and a 5% separately. So we're going to take our 30% of 50, which is going to be the 10% times three. So that's going to be three times five, which is 15, just in the screen there, that's five. We're then going to need to take this 10% and turn it into a 5% by halving it. So 5% of 50 is 5 divided by 2, which is going to be 2.5. Therefore, 35% of 50 is going to be the 30% plus the 5%, which is 2.5. So that is going to be 15 plus 2.5. It's going to be 17.5. Okay. 
So that's how we would work out answers for the maths ones. Now, I figure that's worth going over because we are going to be doing a little bit more of this today as well. Um, so your maths activities today will be focusing on the same sorts of skills. It's stuff that we've done before. We're consolidating stuff because we, you know, we, we want to make sure that you're understanding stuff before we go on to new material. And especially learning in this situation, it might have you know, knocked you off track just a little bit and we're making sure that you're staying on track as much as possible before we progress. Anyway, that's maths. That's how we're tackling maths at the moment. Um, writing wise, I, I really enjoyed reading some of your writing. Uh, the, the great thing about it is that Miss Lindsay and I are able to read things from all three classes at the moment. Um, and some of it was was really, really excellent. So well done. What I'd say is that pretty much everyone um, kind of managed to do a really good rundown of events. Uh, there, you know, you were sort of laying out the things that you've been doing over the social isolation period, and that, that's really good. What I would say is there was a lot of we went or we did. Um, you know, we went to the, uh, we went to this, we did this, we sat, you know, and it, if you do that, it maybe becomes just a little bit repetitive. So what I would say is that actions add vibrancy. Try to think of decent verbs. Scrap the word went. Scrap the word did. Okay? They don't enhance your writing. What you really want to be doing is thinking about good quality verbs and adverbs. Okay? Um, so there's a few examples on the Word document. One of the tasks, you're being given a proper grammar task today for literacy, and that's fine. You know, you should definitely be doing that. But if you get done with that, because it's it's not that big a task, um, one of the things that I would recommend doing is going back to your writing and having a much closer look at the success criteria and see if you can redraft it to improve it. Look at some of the other people's work. They've posted, uh, everyone's posted work online. Some of them now count as waggles, what a good one looks like. Have a look at that. Look at other people's work, see what sort of vocabulary have they used, how have they structured their sentences, um, and what makes it an effective piece of, of, of writing. There's a success criteria for a reason, guys. And one of the things that I'm going to say is I think a lot of people maybe just read the task. Uh, and the task sort of said, um, you know, you're writing a diary entry about the social isolation period. And a lot of you looked at that and went, right, that's what I'm doing. I know the game. Off I go. Whereas if you want to create a really comprehensive or a really engaging piece of writing, it's really important that you pay attention to that success criteria. And the success criteria we've given, I think, is quite good. So things like, uh, you, I can set the scenes, uh, sorry, I can set the scene by giving actions to objects. And then there's an example beside it. The morning dewdrops upon the leaves appear to shimmer in the light of the dawn. Now that won't be appropriate for, for your one necessarily, your story, um, but it gives you an idea of what we mean by adding actions to to objects. So the object there is the dew drops. The action is that they're shimmering. Okay. Try to think about having those, uh, you know, get, giving actions to objects in order to make it a little bit more vibrant. So if you're redrafting today, please go back, look at the success criteria, and that will hopefully uh, allow you to, to really enhance the quality of the work that you're producing. Okay. Right. Anyway, those are our recaps. So we've done a little bit of health and well-being. We've done a little bit of maths. We've talked a little bit about yesterday's writing, and we're now moving on to grammar. So uh, in today's grammar lesson, what we're learning to do is use commas. I'm going to turn this around now, actually, and hopefully you can you can see. Um, is that all on the screen? Yeah, a little bit wonky, a bit of reflection off, off the lights here, but that's fine. Um, we're learning to use commas to add additional information in a sentence. Now, I've said sentence here, actually. I'm not sure that's entirely right, because really what we're doing is we're learning uh, we're, we're learning to use commas to combine not sentences, but clauses. Oh, dear, I've used the wet side of the sponge, and that's not good, so this is now going to be a nightmare to draw. Could my uh, lovely assistant hand me a kitchen towel, please? Uh, because I will need to dry this off. There we go. Not the kind of problem that we face working in the classroom, but right here, right now, not ideal. Right, um, so learn to use commas to combine not sentences, but clauses. Now, a clause is basically a distinct piece of information that can be held inside a sentence, okay? So clauses 
contain distinct parts of informa pieces of information. Um, so I've got two pieces of information here, albeit they're now a little bit rubbed off, uh, but we've got clause A over here and clause B over here. Clause A, I'll try and copy, uh, I'll copy this into the chat so hopefully you guys can see it as well. Control C, look at that, using our keyboard shortcuts from our ITT lesson the other day. Control V. And here are the two clauses. So oh, we've got clause A, the dog was baring its teeth. And we've got clause B, the dog was usually a friendly dog. Now, the task for you here, guys, and this is a little bit tricky, the task for you is to try and combine these clauses using a comma. So we've got the dog was baring its teeth. And the dog was usually a friendly dog. I'm asking you to go at it cold. I reckon it's probably a little bit much. So I'm going to give you an example for this first one here. Still parts of this board that are a bit wet. I'll give you an example for this first one, and then you can try joining in with some future ones. Okay, so how would I do this? I would say the dog, who was usually a friendly dog, was baring its teeth. Okay, so I do a comma in between there. So the dog, comma, who was usually friendly, comma, was bearing its teeth. Excuse my handwriting. I'll also copy this to the chat again so that you can see how that's done. So we've turned the original two clauses the dog was bearing a teeth and the dog was usually friendly, into dog, who was usually friendly, was bearing its teeth. Hopefully you can kind of see how that works, how we can take two distinct clauses, two distinct different ideas, and put them together by using commas. That's kind of the purpose of commas. It allows you, it allows you to include additional information in a sentence, and we do that by combining clauses. Give me a yay or a woo if you feel like you're understanding that in the comments. Got a yes from Mr. Ramsey. We've got a yay from Miss Tate. Excellent. Okay, so lots of yes is coming up there. Um, Right, so I'm going to give you guys an example to try yourself, and this is our uh, this is our chance to be a little bit interactive here. Uh, I've got three examples for you, uh, one after the other. Uh, so the first one here, and I'll try and write it up. I'm going to post it into the chat first. So stop writing your yays just now, otherwise you'll bury the comment. Uh, your two clauses here, two clauses here are the tree standing proud in the forest, and the tree had erupted with blossom. I'll type that again in the comments because it's already starting to get buried. So those are your two clauses. What I want you to do is on the chat, don't type anything else. This is your chance to try and get involved in the lesson. I want you to try and combine those two clauses now using a comma. So we've got clause A. I'm going to improvise a bit here, sorry. Okay, so clause A. The sponge is obviously soaking, dear me. Um, is the tree was standing proud in the forest. No, that's not going to going to work. It's, uh, the thing's far too wet. I might have to abandon uh, abandon the board a little bit at the moment. But clause A is that the tree was standing proud in the forest. Clause B is that the tree had erupted with blossom. I see that Nate here uh, now exterminate. I think that's uh, Nathaniel. I think um, he's already posted a comment. So the tree, comma, that had erupted with blossom, comma, was standing proud in the forest. That would absolutely work. Absolutely work. However, we've got Grace, who's done it another way. The tree, comma, standing proud in the forest, comma, had erupted with blossom. We've got Freddie here doing it a slightly different way. The tree, comma, which was standing proud in the forest, comma, had erupted with blossom. Now, these all mean exactly the same thing, but it adds a, dif a different rhythm to the sentence. They can all work a little bit differently, okay? So 
Anyone else chiming in with these? Anyone? Uh, can anyone get a different way of doing it? I'm gonna. I'm gonna copy. Uh, I can't copy. Oh, I can copy comments here. Um, the best three so far are Nathaniel's, Grace's, and Freddie's. Oh, we've got Aisha. That's a good one. Standing proudly in the forest, the tree erupt had erupted with blossom or erupted with blossom. Perfect. Perfect. A really good way of doing that. Excellent. Well done. Okay. We seem to be uh, getting the idea, but let's try a, a second one now. So this one has a bit, a bit more of a lugubrious feel to it, a little bit uh, almost macabre in a way. Um, so we've got the baby, uh, it's clause A. Baby was crying inconsolably. And clause B, the baby was hungry. So two different clauses here. You combine them. And can you combine them in as many different ways as you can? So hopefully this board is drying out a bit. The baby was crying inconsolably. And we've got the baby was hungry. Good question from Nathaniel here. What does lugubrious mean again? That was our word of the week last week, I think. Uh, think Eeyore. Eeyore is the quintessential lugubrious character. Um, so someone who is always a little bit gloomy, a little bit down, a little bit negative. Anyway, so the baby was crying inconsolably. The baby was hungry. We've already got some answers coming up in the chat. Uh, Nathaniel has gone for the baby, comma, who was hungry, comma, was crying inconsolably. Grace, the baby, comma, was crying ins inconsolably, comma, hungry. I'm not sure that one makes as much sense. So try to think, are we missing a word there? Might we need a was in there or a who in there? The baby, comma, who was crying inconsolably, comma, was hungry, maybe? Um, the baby was crying consolably because the baby was hungry. So the, the key thing here, guys, the key thing is that we must be using commas to combine the clauses. So have a look at some of the good examples. What I would say is that Nathaniel has a really good example. That's exterminate 749 up above. He has a really good example. Um, we've got uh, Alyssa, the baby, comma, who was hungry, comma, was crying inconsolably. So that's uh, Miss Tate up there. Uh, Freddie's one here, the baby who was crying inconsolably was hungry with commas in between. We've got Aaron uh, working towards something here. So uh, the inconsolably sad baby, comma, was crying. You actually, excuse me, in that case, wouldn't necessarily need a comma if you're doing the inconsolably sad baby was hungry. Um, so that actually takes out the need for a comma, which kind of makes the point in a way that you can, re you know, language is a playful thing. We can we can play with language. We can move bits about in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways, maintain the same meaning, but end up with a different flow, a different feeling to to the way the sentence reads. Um, so anyway, we've got a whole load of ideas there. Uh, I'm going to give just one more, and then we're going to move on to the next section. So this is basically task one of the grammar activity today. Um, so two more clauses now. I'm not sure how easily these ones will copy over. Um, okay. So clause A, the glass smashed on the ground. And clause B, the glass splintered into a million sh razor sharp shards. So. A here would be the glass smashed on the ground. Part B here would be the glass splintered into a million razor sharp shards. Can you combine those two clauses into a single sentence for this one? So the glass, comma, which maybe you could you could do a which had something. I'm not, I'm not trying to give away too much for you here, guys, but hopefully you're starting to get the idea. Let's take this off just now. This is not an ideal board for working on, but making do with the, the situation we find ourselves in. 
Okay, we've got Nathaniel here. The glass smashed onto the ground, comma, into a million razor sharp shard shards. I would say that you don't necessarily need a comma there. We would normally only use a comma if the extra clause was in the middle of the other two. So if you have part of clause one, or sorry, clause, uh, the start of clause A, clause B, and the end of clause A, that's kind of where I would use it. Um, Oh, lots of ideas coming up here. Uh, Sophie, we've got the glass smashed onto the ground, comma, splintered into a... Uh, not, not quite there. Right, I'll tell you what. So this one's pr presenting more issues. I'm going to talk about how I would do this one. Um, so I'll write up clause A and clause B. So we've got the glass smashed on the ground. Uh, and we've got, this one is definitely a harder one, the glass splintered um, into a million razor sharp shards. Uh, so I would take this a couple of different ways. OK, uh, I think one possible way would be to change uh, change the word splintered to splintering. So we could do something like, um, I'll tell you what, let, let, let's start off a little bit easier. We could go the glass, comma, which splintered into a million sharp shards, which splintered. Am I even on the screen here? Not quite. Into a million razor sharp shards uh, smashed on the ground. Forgive my handwriting. Hopefully that is clear-ish. There we go, I'm hauling this thing around now. It's quite cumbersome. So the glass smashed on the ground. The glass splintered into a million razor sharp shards. So now we have the glass, comma, which splintered into a million razor sharp shards, comma, smashed on the ground. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. Um, another way you could do it, though, still using a comma, could be the glass smashed onto the ground, comma, splintering into a million razor sharp shards. So you could do it that way as well. Both valid ways of doing it, both using commas, both combining the clauses, but doing it in two slightly different ways there. Okay? Got someone saying, now this is challenging. That's good, that's good. We're, we're meant to be challenging. Now, not that one is a more challenging one, but hopefully, hopefully that's starting to make a bit more sense. Rosalind here, straight in the glass, which smashed on the ground, splintered into a million razor shark shards. Another really good way of doing that. So again, there, there's different ways of combining these clauses. You just need to think of effective ways of doing it to use commas. Okay, so that is task one on your grammar today. Now, you've already kind of done it along with me here, but do do it in your jotters. Look at the, the Word document. There's an audio file also explaining it as well. So try doing that. Um, <clears throat> The other task is a little bit different and it's a little bit more, well, you know what? It works better being a bit more interactive. Um, my class have certainly done this briefly before. We've kind of used this as a wee warm up activity. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be copying the style of a sentence that is using a comma, okay? So the comma will always be used to add additional information to the text. OK, um, so I'll tell you what, here's here's the first one. What I want you to do, is copy the style of this sentence. So stop posting on the chat for just a second so that everyone can see this. So the sentence is leaping elegantly, comma, the deer bounded over the fence. So leaping elegantly, the deer bounded over the fence. You'll see there's a comma there. OK, so what we've kind of got is verb, adverb and then the rest of the thing that happened. So verb, adverb, the noun, verbed, 
if you like. I know that's not a very user-friendly way of putting it, but <clears throat> verb adverb, the noun verbed. Um, so I want you to try and create your own completely original sentence that copies that style, copies the same style using a comma in the same place for the same purpose, but has a completely different meaning. Um, so the crying baby needed, uh, uh, oh, we've gone way back to another one here. Jumping happily, Mara jumped over the wall. Why am I not surprised, Nathaniel, that we have a, a, either a Mario or a Shrek example? I know you so well. I could have predicted that. Could have predicted it. Um, but a perfect example. So jumping happily, Mario jumped over the wall. Verb, adverb, noun, verb. So we've got Max, somebody here. Um, I think you've slightly misunderstood the task, pal. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a completely different sentence, completely different sentence that follows the same structure, the same style, okay? So don't reword that sentence. Try to come up with your own one. Sitting happily, Shrek. I'm not going to read that one out, pal. I'm not going to read that one out. You almost had me there. You almost had me. Um, jumping carelessly. The Oh, no, I've, I've blocked off. Here we go. Uh, from Alyssa, jumping carelessly, the dancer broke her leg. Uh, leaping elegantly, the something jumped over the wall. Okay. Um, let's try and get a few more on the go here, guys. So you're just trying to copy the style. I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, I've got another one ready here. Um, same style but written in a different way. Um, we've got, scrambling desperately, the girl propelled herself back to safety. Okay, we've got, we've got uh, Callie with her usual Harry style stuff, but try to follow the structure of the sentence, Callie, okay? So instead of uh, Harry style's hair twisted and turned elegantly as he sang, uh, you could do, I'm trying to think, how, how would we restructure that one as a verb adverb? Uh, twisting elegantly, Harry Styles hair. Uh, well, that doesn't quite work. Anyone see if you can re if you can rework Callie's Harry Styles example, because uh, I'm sure that would make her more than happy. Um, soaring high, the aeroplane climbed into the sky. Perfect example, Bruce. Really, really good. Running frantically. The girl ran away from the train. Really good one. Is that Sky there? Yeah, that's Sky. Um, we've, got, we've got other people contributing to the Harry Styles one. Leaping desperately, Shrep escaped the giant Doritos. You, Nathaniel, have the most unique sense of humor, and I respect that. Okay, anyway, you, you hopefully see that there is there's a sort of style to the sentence there. Something, something, the something, something. And we use a comma to separate that. So that was one style of sentence here. Um, here's a slightly different one. Now, it works in a slightly different way. Um, so we've got, I can post it to the chat. Oh, except I keep clicking the wrong button. Such a noob. Uh, the ice cream, comma, which was thick and creamy, comma, looked delicious. So the ice cream, which was thick and creamy, looked delicious. So what we're looking for is the something, comma, which was something, comma, was something. The something, the noun, which was this way, was something. See if you can create your own sentence that copies that particular style. Well, we've still got... Uh, no worries, Aisha. You uh, take care of yourself today, okay? I know this, uh, this is nearly a 40-minute lesson you guys are getting here. Sorry about that. Um, we've got Rosalind doing another one from the last time. Burning incandescently, the stars hung in the dark night sky. Really good example. I like that use of the word incandescently. That's been one of our one of our words that we've used in class. But let's try and use this sentence, uh, this sentence structure now about the ice cream. So I'm going to post it again to the chat. Can anyone follow this style? Um, Fat Frog, which was big, jumped high. Really good, Jessica. Perfect example, because you've got that comma, which was, in the sentence. 
Okay, really, really good. Show off. There's no showing off here, Callum. No showing off. We're all in it together, just trying to do our best, pal. The Doritos, which were hard and crispy, was devoured by Mike Wazowski. Should, shouldn't it be were devoured because it's plural, I think. The petal, which was delicate and pristine, looked beautiful. Fantastic, Grace. Yeah, you've definitely got that one. Hopefully some more of those coming up, but it seems like we're getting that one. That one's an easier one to get. Um, right, let's try. This one's a bit similar, actually, but it's just leaving out the word print. Um, so this next one is very similar. The cake. Comma, a towering decadent chocolate gateau, comma, was carried out on an ornate silver platter. So the cake, a towering decadent chocolate gateau, was carried out on an ornate silver platter. Now, this works almost exactly the same way. It's just, we've just left out the word which was. So it could be the cake, which was, ah, uh, yada, 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 was carried out on a platter. Um, we've just left out the which was. So try doing one that copies this sentence style. Get your thought processes going. Um, and if you feel like you're getting this, by the way, I've rabbited on for 40 minutes now. If you feel like you get this, if this is like, all right, no, I understand now, on you go and do it. Task one is just combining clauses together. Uh, task two is sort of the, the following the style of a sentence. The cake, a big black forest. Was a lie. <laughs> you got me with that one, pal. The cake was a lie for science. Uh, you know what? It's like you, me, and Cameron will be the only ones that get that. Anyone, any Portal fans in today? No, probably not. Anyway, well done, well done. Because the thing is, I start reading these things before I really process them, so you actually caught me off guard with that. Harry Styles, uh, instead of sang beautifully and danced, singing beautifully, and, and would that work? I'd say Harry Styles, who was singing beautifully, comma, danced elegantly. That's how I would rephrase your one, Callie. Okay. Um, oh, Sophie, that, that's a good attempt, but try to think of uh, try to think of another thing that the candle. So the candle, uh, which was uh, flickering gently, comma blew out with a gust of wind. I think that's how I would do that one. So I'm going to try rewording that. This is my attempt at rewording Sophie's one here. Uh, so the candle. Comma, which was flickering gently, uh, blew out with a gust of wind. That is how I think I would restructure your one, Sophie. Uh, flower, which I say take out the was there. So that this is uh, Nadia's one. So you've gone the flower, which was shone bright in the sun, uh, was ready to be watered. Just take out the was there, the flower which you could say was shining or shone brightly in the sun, was ready to be watered. Um, Mr. Ramsey here, the picture, a different... Oh, I, I like that one, actually, Callum. The picture, a different world of colour and emotion was hung in a gold case. You know what? That one is nice. That one is nice. I like that one. Uh, Grace here, the crown with many shining and colourful gems was carried on a plush cushion. Really good. Right, guys, you know what? That's pretty much us. I think you kind of get this. And if you don't, other people can uh, other people can watch back over the chat here. I know this has been a long lesson. We're coming up on 45 minutes now, but I think that's pretty much enough. Um, so what I would say, today, get onto Teams. Make sure you're supporting each other as much as possible. Like I said at the start, uh, Miss Lindsay and I were finding it quite hard to sort of firefight as much as we could. Uh, that, that'll make it a bit easier for us if you're able to support each other and post comments to each other, advise one another. Um, get yourself onto Teams. The math today is just more percentages stuff. And that's what we worked on at the start of this live stream. If you missed that, go back and watch it if you feel like you need to. Um, writing, you might want to think about redrafting your work. Um, 
trying to really look at the success criteria. That's a key thing that I want you doing. Look at that success criteria. And then lastly, um, your grammar today, there's two tasks. One is combining clauses together. The dog was baring its teeth. Uh, the dog was usually friendly becomes the dog, which was usually a friendly dog, was baring its teeth. Uh, and then task two is you're trying to copy the style of the sentence that you were given. And that's what you guys have kind of been doing in the chat here. Anyway, that's the 45 minute mark. I'm signing off now. Got lots of other stuff to do. Got your lessons to plan for the rest of the week. This is an interesting period. But I hope you've enjoyed uh, tuning in today. And oh, yeah, do you need to submit your work by email? No, you don't, Freddie. What I would like you to do um, is submit your work on the chat stream of wherever you got it from. So the literacy task, take a photo of it and then post it on the literacy chat. The maths tasks, take a photo of it, post it on the maths chat. Hopefully that makes sense. And then you can all give each other feedback on it. If you notice anyone's gone wrong, try to tell them how to go right. Okay? Right, guys, I'm signing out. You take care of yourselves. Don't go outside. Be good boys and girls. Don't get this virus and take care of yourselves. All the best, guys. See you on Friday, same time, 10 a.m.